So eight dollars. Wow. A supposed billionaire gifted eight dollars. Um and I mean there's 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 the there, there's famous articles in Spy magazine where they used to do this thing where they would send checks to people, like celebrities, to see who would cash yes. it. And he was right. the only um, Besides, uh, was it Butchers Butchers Golly to, to cash the check? It was like twelve cents. Uh, Michael <laughs> Moore did that, didn't he? Michael Moore did that too. Was that I think was that one of uh, uh, early articles? Was he writing for Spy? Yeah, no. I think I'm not sure if he was, but I know for his first book, uh, he had sent out a series of checks to see who would cash them from this like random organizations like pedophiles for for gore and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Um, so Spy magazine used to do that all the time, just to figure out who was the cheapest celebrity. And so we none of the, again this this whole thing is like, yeah. I mean, you you voted for this. I don't know what you were expecting. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, it's all going to collapse anytime any anything anything bad happens. He's not going to take responsibility. He's going to run away. He's going to blame everybody else. That's what he's always done. Yeah, uh, the, exactly. Yeah. Oh, you we, guys, we have the same thing going on up here. Uh, you guys, we, we, do you know the helicopter story? I which no. Okay, so in the in the late eighties, you can look this you know, look up the, the news item, but in the late eighties he was uh in the midst of bankrupting three casinos. Um, which is as you know is really hard to do. But he was he was trying to open he'd opened two casinos and he wanted to open a third casino in Atlantic City. And um uh and his people were saying, Hey, that's a really dumb idea because you're just gonna be competing against yourself and he ignored that. Because that's exactly what happened. So um, uh, he had Trump branded helicopters everywhere, and um, th- the money was he was hemorrhaging money. Um, <laughs> and uh, his advisors, who ran the various casinos, were telling him, "You can't stop taking money out of the businesses to pay off your bills. You can't do that. You can't do all this." <laughs> stuff. And uh, so um, the uh, uh, the guys who were running two of the casinos. Uh, and like some of the other, there was three people on this helicopter that he had rented. That was not a Trump brand casino. It was a new, new helicopter. And that helicopter crashed and they all died. Um, and uh, it was rumored. I'm not going to state that it's true. Um, it was rumored that this was mob related because uh, he owed a lot oh, of money. Wow. Oh. Um, what he did was first he claimed that he was supposed to be on the helicopter. He was not. Um, he was no <laughs> <laughs> then he blamed the guy who, who was forced to replace replace him for the failure of his casinos, which was not true. And then he blamed uh, the guys who died for the failure of his casinos, which is of course ludicrous because um, he was pulling money out of businesses. Um, and then he sued the helicopter company <laughs> for causing the bankruptcy of his businesses. Wow, that is brilliant. And, Last third, we lost that suit because he loses most lawsuits. Um, oh, yeah. uh, he, he spent the last 30 years claiming he was about to die in that helicopter clash and like he was a genius because he didn't end up on it or something. Um, but you can find the news articles about the helicopter crash. And then if you keep following along with the various news stories, you get anyone who's interviewed about it. And it's like, yeah, that's exactly who this guy was. I mean, I was talking to someone who heard the story and he was like, oh, yeah, we thought he had them killed. And I'm like, it would make sense. <laughs> I just yeah, love sure. how nonchalant people are about it. I think really people have just, <laughs> in both of our countries, people have given up on politicians. That's how you end up with Trump and Trudeau. People just go, nah, fuck it, vote for Trump. Yeah. Well, but uh, Trudeau, legacy thing, Trump is just like, here is a guy who has been screaming from the rooftops since the early 70s that he was a, that he was a grifter. Yeah, uh, fair enough. Roy Cohn was his lawyer. You don't do that if if you're on the on the level. Yeah. He was a mob lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an accident that I based Roy Cohn. Like I wrote the movie before Trump was like a political thing, but you know I, he was my the one of the villains was always based on Roy Cohn because I find Roy Cohn utterly fascinating. Just one of the worst people who ever lived. I don't know if you know who that is, but oh yeah, uh, of course. Um, uh, at least there, now there's two documentaries out about him now. Um, but he was he was uh, Trump's lawyer in the uh, racial discrimination case in the 70s when when Trump and his father wouldn't rent to black people. So so <laughs> it, was, it was so openly racist that the Nixon administration sued them. Now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I didn't know that. 
Yeah, no, no, it's a good one. So whenever you hear, oh, he's not racist, you're just saying that because you're a Democrat. No, 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 no. This has been going on no, for no. a long time. There's, <laughs> there's incident after incident that are, that are very similar to this. Um, See, imagine, I, I think that it's very fair to call out the Democrats on their, their propagating racism, but... Um, I'll give you 50 I, examples of him doing it before anybody knew who it was. <laughs> it's not hard. Oh, yeah, fair <laughs> enough, yeah. Um, and I, I don't doubt it. I, I've known the guy was... I've thought the guy was a jackass since about the time he released his board game. Um, Would that have been and, late 80s, early 90s, something like yeah, that? Yeah, late 80s, yeah. And I just... I, I was baffled that he... I Well, first of all, I was baffled he stuck out the race for the whole thing. I But I can't believe he got elected. That was just like a... It was kind of like that Eddie Murphy bit from Delirious where he's like, I, I fuck it. holy shit, he won. You know, like yeah. they're voting for the because they never think he'd win. <laughs> Go get yeah, him drunk. I don't think, <laughs> think he'd win either. The whole, po- the whole point was that he wanted uh, more money in The Apprentice. He wasn't really trying to win. Um, Fair enough. He, he, it was contract negotiation. I mean, it was, you know, sort of subtle news, but that was the whole point was he wasn't getting paid enough and he wanted, he thought this would be a, a boost. And, um, he learned from Newt Gingrich. Newt Gingrich ran for president in 2012 uh, because oh, it was basically cheap. It was basically cheaper than paying for a book tour. So he used the r- running for presidency to raise money to pay for his book tour. That's a great idea, actually. Um, <laughs> so what happens? Does he? Does if he loses, does he leave quietly in November? I don't think he. Le- I think what he does is he complains and says it's rigged, which he's already done. He did the last time anyway. Complains it's rigged, and then. Uh, as soon as the military gets close enough to removing him, he pretends to take the high road and leaves and then gets a, you know, a weekly spot on Fox News where he complains about Joe Biden or whatever, wh- whatever situation it is and complains. It, and, you know, what he does, which is project all of his own failures on everybody else. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's Biden. I think they're pulling a rope dope I think the Democrats have a have a last minute rope dope up their sleeve and they're going to pull Biden and and put in a contender. Why? I really I would, do. Why, why bother? I mean, look, if, if this is going to continue and, you know, uh, Biden's up 20 points in October, why would you do anything? Because Fair. they're not smart people. <laughs> I don't see I don't see Biden being up by 20 points in October. If he's up, what, 12 now and this isn't going to get better. They, you know, they just announced yesterday and, and today that they've got 55,000 new infections like, you know, yesterday. Is that it's, is that what what ruins his? Candidacy or is pres- is uh... you, because the because the economies can't uh, reopen because anytime you know the, Texas had to close all their bars again. That's true. And Florida is going to have to reclose, and those there's you know, and then all the old people are going to who would vote for him is, are going to be dead. Is Florida Florida just? I love the way they've handled this. I the whole time. Uh, Gordon and I are big fans of both Texas and Florida. They're uh, yeah, my. They <laughs> I've never been to Florida. I spent some time in Texas. I absolutely loved it. Um, I'm just learning about Florida and how fantastic they are, and their response split to up COVID. Very, they're split up very strangely. It's like I uh, like 30, 35, 45 percent complete redneck. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, and then and maybe like 15 percent old Jew, 10 percent old cuban and then there are upscale parts of it that are nice and then and but, then and, and, then, there, and then there are parts that are just basically like you're living with jimmy buffett yeah and they're we had to do an episode about the amount of fecal matter leaking into the water there and i was like <laughs> when, you, when you hear the numbers you're like no wonder they don't care about covid it just <laughs> They're eating <laughs> shit literally all day. <laughs> it's gotta it be is, just a terrible place to you, live. I mean, are you being? I'm assuming you're being a little sarcastic about how they're handling it. They're not handling it well at all. But you know, no, yeah, no, I just, yeah, I yeah. think it. <laughs> I Total think we should have. <laughs> we all, we all did it wrong. Uh, to be honest, I think we should have went at it like chicken pox, and we'd all have had it and be done with it by now. Oh, but it would have been much worse. Because we, because we, they have, have they been able to prove that you can't get reinfected? No. Uh, well, they no. keep changing their mind on that. Right. They, but you, they have been able to prove yeah. there's an 89% recovery rate. Again, um, a really bad number. <laughs> it's 98%. It's, you always see 89. It's 98% recovery rate. No, it's 89. 
The last that, I, the last I heard, it was eighty nine percent, which so, means eleven percent of the people actually die. That's that's very bad. That's, it's really not. When you think about things that you know in in Canada, traffic accidents kill way more people than COVID has every single year. For some reason, those are acceptable deaths. We don't traffic don't... accidents in the U.S. are are at thirty five thousand. Gun deaths exceeded them a couple of years ago. Um, right. So uh, we're way past uh, traffic accidents, I guess. Like you are, like, you've you've got it, yeah. you've got it pretty bad. But but then again, you guys kill. Uh, I think the last count I heard was eighteen hundred uh, Americans are killed by Americans every day. Is it or year? I forget what that number was. It was eighteen hundred. Forty thousand gun deaths uh, in 2017. I don't remember what the 2018 numbers, but it exceeded right. for the first time. Um, Eighteen hundred deaths, murders a day. I, is that what you're talking about? Uh, somewhere in there? I forget the number. We would we were just talking about it. It's. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was eighteen hundred murders a day. Okay, if you say so. I, I don't. I, don't I, I look could be up. wrong. I'd have to look it up again. But that like, sounds, that sounds like a lot, though. Why is COVID scary? Uh, when everybody's shooting each other anyway, I, I don't see the. I'll, I'll I'll explain why. Um, uh, the media and uh the rest of the country only cares when rich old white people are affected. So when when grandpa with money is has no control over, he can't can't be shielded, you know, by money because of an unknown disease that he doesn't understand. Then everyone gets scared. Then something happens. Um, I was sure. talking with a. With a, a friend who worked on on my film, and he he saw the Black Panther showing up with guns, and he said that that makes me nervous. I don't really like that. And I said, but you got to understand, the NRA only cared about gun control when black people had guns. So the only way that anything changes is when rich white people get scared. So you want things to change? You have you have to scare all the rich white people. Why do you think the economy only shut down? Because, oh, absolutely. Because uh, of that. If this had only affected the poor, which is part of the point of my film, they never would have done anything. Oh, d- absolutely. But I think it's really, we've made, like, we're quarantining healthy people. That's yeah. never happened before. That makes no sense. And I think a lot of this, I, I call it the scamdemic because I genuinely believe it was nothing more than all of our governments uh, getting us back under their control because well, we were laughing at them. And the, the whole dialogue Jesus. for the entire. Since December, the dialogue has been, if you don't do exactly as we tell you, you and your family will die. And it was a brilliant campaign for them. I think the point but, was, was basically, you've got to keep everyone quarantined because otherwise the, uh, you'll run out of ICU beds. And then lots of other people will die for other reasons. So the, sure. if, you just let it run, if you just let it run wild, you're going to have the problem where you're, your hospitals will be overrun not just with coronavirus deaths but all sorts of other people dying of other things and there's nowhere to put them and then you're just literally carting bodies out on the street so right it might have been i understand crazy. coming from being in yeah. new york it's probably a little scarier because i understand it's been quite uh concentrated there and and frightening yeah. for you guys well i, I mean don't think in the rest of the world I was in new york yesterday and 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 it is uh everything seems very locked down and everyone is terrified and nobody knows exactly because everything's packed there nobody knows right. exactly what to do um it is it, it is much scarier there i i agree yeah, i am in the, I, I live in the suburbs it's not as bad although we've got you know required masks when i go to work i've got to wear a mask when i get near anybody but luckily right. i'm not only more than a couple people so it's not a big and deal. uh that's another one that just blows my mind but i uh, just um so i i guess um, what was I saying? Now I've kind of lost my point because of it. Um, we were on Trump. I apologize. <clears throat> <laughs> so we we think Biden's gonna win, <laughs> and uh, I don't. I don't think. I think Trump's got another four years. I don't think he wants it. I mean, the only reason he well, no, he does want it because the charges would be forthcoming. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now you uh, heard he about needs, the charges against Trump in Iran, right? He need he needs the statutes of limitations to run out. Uh, no, it, it's the Southern District of New York. That's why he that's why he had that lawyer fired. Right. Recently. Oh, um, right. Yeah. I mean, look, the best way to understand Trump is it was an article written by David Roth. 
uh, in um, two art Caesars articles. One was for Deadspin, the other was for 